Hey everyone, welcome to another first impression video. Before we get started, there's something I want to address from my last video. During my review of the season 1 premiere, I said that I had an issue with the final element being magic. In response to the comments that I've gotten about that, yes, I do understand that friendship is magic. I mean, it's the title of the show, it's one of the reasons I don't obsess over it in my other reviews. But there are a couple of things that I want to clarify. First, I still think the wording is just a little bit ambiguous considering that you have a universe where one-third of the population has actual sorcery-style magic, and a lot of them aren't very friendly, surprisingly enough. But also, one of my goals for the video was to show what my initial reaction was when I saw parts of the episode for the first time. And when they were building up to that reveal of the final element, I remember thinking, okay, it's gonna be friendship, or heart, or love, or something like that. And my honest reaction the first time I heard Twilight say magic was, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I apologize if anyone was confused about what I was trying to do. Obviously, that initial reaction didn't keep me from being a fan of the show. But man, how appropriate was it that I just happened to review that episode right when season 4 began? I really had no idea there would be so many references between them. Now, I'm still debating whether or not I'll do first impressions for all the season 4 episodes, but this one almost seems tailor-made for this sort of thing. I'm honestly still not sure how I feel about this episode, and I'll probably have to watch it a few more times before I make up my mind about it. Now, there is a lot to like here, and frankly, if I think about it just in terms of what actually happens, the idea of this episode is amazing. But there are some problems, including one that could potentially be a deal breaker, which is why I'm going to have to watch it again. But let's get into it. From the beginning, I really like that Rainbow Dash is teaching Twilight how to fly. But then, almost immediately afterward, it's like they forgot about Equestria Girls. Now, Megan McCarthy has said that contrary to popular belief, Equestria Girls is canon because, in her own words, the events did happen and Twilight learned something from it. But if you think about Twilight's character arc from Equestria Girls, she started out not wanting to wear her crown and also not wanting anyone to call her a princess. Then she starts taking charge while she tries to get the crown back, and by the end of the movie, she starts to accept her new identity. Now we get to the season 4 premiere, and it's the same thing all over again. In fact, the hub even re-ran Equestria girls on TV right before the season premiere, so my first thought here was, didn't we just finish dealing with this? Especially considering that Megan McCarthy wrote both of them? But moving on from that, we get more good stuff. They deal with the possibility of a rift forming between Twilight and her friends now that she has royal duties to attend to. And we also get what feels like the first major piece of character development from Celestia, and Boy, is it huge. We find out that the Summer Sun celebration that she holds every year is actually really painful for her because it reminds her of Luna. Then Celestia and Luna go missing, and you really do feel a sense of panic from Twilight as everyone starts asking her what to do. But I also like how she is able to take charge, even if it is just to tell the guards to keep looking for clues. Also, the simultaneous day and night was pretty cool. Meanwhile, these black tentacle vines appear in Ponyville, and everyone figures that with all the other strange stuff that's going on, it has to be Discord. By the way, there's a great twist with that later on, after Twilight drinks the Avatar juice. Yes, I'm gonna be nice and call it Avatar juice because of the glowing eyes. Now, I could make another comment about the white, funny-tasting liquid that Twilight sucks down in long, slow gulps but I won't. By the way, Twilight, here's a little tip. Swallow it quickly, it'll make the taste go away a lot quicker. Trust me on this. Also, am I the only one who thinks it's strange that she's told to use alicorn magic on the potion, and she uses the dark magic from the Crystal Empire? Because I don't think that's strictly alicorn magic. You probably could have used something safer. But anyway, getting to Discord. He's back, and despite all the fan work that's been trying to salvage Keep Calm and Flutter on, here he doesn't even seem like he gives two shits about being anyone's friend. He barely remembers Fluttershy's name half the time and even gets her mixed up with Rainbow Dash. I'm actually reminded here of a convention panel where someone asked John Delancey what he thought about Fluttershy and Discord being friends, and his response was basically, are they friends, really? Well, you guys follow the show better than I do. Very well played, Mr. Delancey. And I have to admit, I thought this scene was really amusing. Unfortunately, it also creates some problems for Keep Calm and Flutter On, and more importantly, it creates problems for the end of 
this episode. Uh, so what else? Twilight drinks the Avatar juice and gets flashbacks from a thousand years ago, though it takes her a really long time to figure that out. First we see what happened when Luna became Nightmare Moon, then we go back further to when Celestia and Luna fought Discord, and then we go back to when Celestia and Luna found the elements of harmony in the first place. The Nightmare Moon flashback was really cool and has one of the darkest moments I've ever seen on this show, but it felt like its only purpose was for Twilight to figure out what the potion did. Also, they apparently forgot that Nightmare Moon's voice is supposed to be deeper than Luna's. The Discord flashback felt really pointless until the twist was revealed at the end, and it was actually really clever. It's not a cheap fake out that they pull out of nowhere either. They put a major clue right in front of your face and make sure that you notice it, but you don't even give it a second thought until the end. Also, I noticed that Celestia sounds a lot younger during this scene, so maybe the sisters aren't as immortal as they appear. And if you'll forgive me for going off on another tangent, Lauren Faust has suggested that she would potentially like to do a show about Luna and Celestia when they were younger. Now, I know she's been off the show for a long time and had nothing to do with this episode, but based on this episode, I really want to see that show. Celestia and Luna together had the most interesting scenes of the whole premiere, better than the main six. Seriously, I don't care how you make it happen, I want to see more of this. But getting back to the episode, it turns out that Discord was behind it all along, but not the modern Discord. In the flashback during his showdown with Celestia and Luna, we see Discord eating what I thought was a bag of rocks, and really that doesn't even seem that unusual for him at this point, but they're actually seeds for the black vines that grow later. We also learn that Celestia took the elements of harmony from the Tree of Harmony. It turns out the reason the vines took so long to grow is because residual magic from the Tree of Harmony was keeping them down, but without the elements, that magic is now gone, and to protect Equestria, the main six have to return the elements of harmony to their source, and in doing so, they reveal a mystery box with six keyholes that will supposedly be built up throughout the season. So, based entirely on that, OMFG, this episode's amazing! But, like I said, it does create problems with Discord. If the elements of Harmony are gone, which feels like it should be a much bigger deal than it is, by the way, and he doesn't really care about being friends with anyone, not to mention that the main six are still being extremely rude, then why is he agreeing to behave himself? The characters even bring this up in the episode, but the closest thing we get to an answer is Fluttershy telling him, if you want to keep being friends, then you better watch out, and the problem, just like before, is that we still haven't seen them acting like friends, so I'm having a really hard time understanding the motivation here. Now this isn't really a deal breaker yet, because there's still the possibility that they'll explain this and develop it later, but since my review of Keep Calm and Flutter On, I said I would keep an open mind if they handled it well in future episodes. So far, this is not handling it well. It's only creating more inconsistencies. So what is potentially a deal breaker? Honestly, it's the tone throughout the episode. The way the jokes are so plainly telegraphed, the way the dialogue sounds like it's talking down to the audience. It sets up these enormous scenes, but it often feels like it doesn't have any impact. And I think part of the problem is what I would call the double rainboom effect. So much time is spent focusing on the fancy new animation, which really does look incredible by the way, that the pacing ends up suffering. I mean really, how long do we need to see Twilight flailing around in the air? Do you think the pinky promise could have gone by a little quicker? How many scenes could have been tightened up a bit by not having characters repeat lines of dialogue, or by not having characters talk about things that we can already see. I mean, hell, when Twilight is told to use alicorn magic on the potion, she actually has a Dora the Explorer moment where she has to look at her horn and her wings before she figures it out. I half expected her to look at the screen and go, we need alicorn magic. Do you see any alicorns around? Pause while looking at the audience for a full minute. That's right! I'm an alicorn. My point is that maybe if they had sped a few of these scenes up at the beginning, then maybe the ending wouldn't have felt so rushed. Tommy Oliver and Digibrony have already pointed out how Twilight's friends send her out of the Everfree Forest only for Discord to send her right back in. By the way, if the whole point was to bring the elements to the Tree of Harmony, then what's the point of sending Twilight home with her element? But the point where it's really noticeable for me is when Celestia says, oh, it must have been so difficult for you to give up the elements, but we never really see 
Twilight struggling with that decision. She just finds the tree and goes, okay, here's where we gotta put the elements. Bye! So do you see why I'm conflicted here? This episode is terrible, and it's amazing, and it does both of these things at the same time. I can't even imagine what this means for the rest of the season, though I do think that many of the problems here could have been fixed very easily. So hopefully that means episodes coming up will lean more towards the positive side. At the very least, I'm hoping that season 4 will have some really interesting ideas.